One day, while making a Clovis point, he had a moment of inspiration. He remembered a popular science book he had seen when he was a student. It showed pictures of ancient spearheads made by the Salutrians, people who lived in Ice Age France and Spain. Their spear points resembled Clovis points. It seemed unbelievable, but Stanford and Bradley posed the question, could the Clovis point and some of the earliest Americans be from Europe? In southwestern France, where the Salutrians had lived 20,000 years ago. When he went there to investigate, one thing soon became clear. The Salutrians were a remarkable people. The Salutrians were responsible for much of the great Stone Age art of Europe, and were the forefathers of the artists who painted the Sistine Chapel of the Ice Age, the Caves of Lascaux. They did a lot of carving in bone and in antler uh, and in ivory. Uh, they fashioned uh, spear throwers. Uh, they painted on cave walls. They had a fairly complex um, means of expressing themselves through their art. Could these remarkable Stone Age Europeans have brought the Clovis Spear Point to the Americas? Of all the Stone Age cultures that we've studied, the Salutrian people continually come out as being the most innovative, the most adaptive, and probably the most inventive. We have evidence that they invented the heat treatment of flint to make it better to flake. I mean, they invented all kinds of things, like the eyed needle. And the, and the list goes on and on and on. Clovis and Salutrian spear points not only look alike, they are made the same unusual way. To Stanford and Bradley, this was a powerful clue that prehistoric explorers had come from Europe and brought with them the technology that transformed Stone Age America, the Clovis spear point. It was an outrageous idea with a few big problems. The Salutrians' culture ended in Europe around 18,000 years ago, and the Clovis Point would not arrive in America for another 5,000 years. If the Salutrians brought the Clovis Point to America, where had they been? In Clovis. For Stanford and Bradley, the Cactus Hill Point bridged the 5,000-year gap connecting Salutrians in France and Clovis in America. But their fledgling theory now confronted another massive problem almost 3,000 miles wide, the Atlantic Ocean. At the time of the Salutrians, ice sheets stretched down as far as southern France, where winter temperatures were 50 degrees colder than today. Unlike the more temperate Pacific coast, the Atlantic would at times have been thick with icebergs and blizzards. Could the Salutrians, a Stone Age people, have made such a voyage? It is the end of the last great ice age, when enormous walls of ice cover much of the northern hemisphere. The traditional theory is that humans migrate from Siberia across the Bering Land Bridge. But in 1998, in Cactus Hill, Virginia, scientists discover projectile points that resemble stone tools made by a people known as Salutrians. The problem is, Salutrians are found over 5,000 miles away from Siberia, in southwestern Europe. The question confounding some scientists is how a prehistoric people from Europe could survive such a dramatic migration. Clues of their survival lay on cave walls near Marseille, France. 
the Paleolithic people of Europe were good cave artists and, and we can tell a lot about the animals they hunted because that was the main thing they painted in the caves, the, the bison, the, the, uh, the deer, the horses. And uh, sure enough, you see seals, uh, you see walrus, uh, you see deep sea fish. Hey, deep sea fish, you don't catch those by throwing a line off the beach. Before venturing out to sea, early hunters survive by taking advantage of the ice along the shore. You can go for miles and miles and miles out on the ocean ice. And the seals, of course, have, have chewed little holes up through there, so the breathing holes, so they can come up and get a breath of fresh air. If the ice starts to melt, it's pretty dangerous to get out there. You can't do it on foot anymore. You gotta have a boat. Around 10,000 BC, sea levels are lower than they are today. And England and France are connected, creating a peninsula jutting out into the North Atlantic. From there, humans could have followed the ice to North America. And you have these guys hunting the edge of the ice, and they're following out the seals from Europe, and they get out there and you're south of Greenland, and all of a sudden you're following seals going the other direction. The lower sea level around 10,000 BC exposes islands that are submerged today, like the Grand Banks off the coast of Nova Scotia. You start running into trees by the time you get to the Georges Bank. You start running into mammoths and uh, uh, an environment that's not much different than the environment in northern Spain, uh, uh, southwestern France. If prehistoric humans did attempt and survive the journey from Europe, Dr. Stanford believes they would have settled in the area around Maryland and Virginia, then radiated around the continent from there. The voyage would have been about 2,000 miles, less than the distance from Siberia to Clovis, New Mexico, where Clovis points were first discovered.